I agree with you. Everything that you just mentioned. So there's so many entrepreneurs that work so many hours that they they work, and I've been there as well. So I'm preaching from a place that I I know where I am and where I came from. Good day, good people. In this video, Jasper Basson and I continue our conversation that was sparked by a poll I did on the community tab of this channel. Jasper made some interesting comments and if you haven't checked out the first part of this conversation, you can find the link in the description or in the top right hand corner of this video. In the comments, you said that working more hours is a killer of creativity and innovation. Now you're already a business owner you work full-time in your business i'm full-time employed mm -hmm. but i think it is vital that all people should have at least one more income not because 100%. it's about the money but just because the world is so uncertain that you actually need to develop one more than one income your your salary is your first income what you do with that money should be serving your purpose right but there is a balance between working too many hours and doing something extra. Let's talk a little bit more about that where you say it's a killer for creativity and innovation. Well, I think firstly, I agree with you, everything that you just mentioned. You kind of work so much. I mean, I've been, when I started my business, I've been working probably, I think, till three in the morning, waking up at seven again and go on again. And you kind of forget about the family and friends and everything all the joys around work and why why you work you need to kind of prioritize if you want to start a business i mean during the last eight nine years i've developed lead optimizers with a partner of myself i allocated through all that time four to six every morning for that business so if you're a full-time employee there's no reason for not having time i mean just allocate some time that won't disturb your family time and obviously during uh, as i go along for, especially last three years i've really developed sp specific habits and really organizing my business to the point that i'm not necessarily need to be there every single second for that business to to be able to to run there's so much science behind not not being overworked i mean the moment you're overworked the mo moment you're tired you, you won't you will never be creative you will never be innovative in in modern society where you we on on digital media all the time and both of us do have youtube channels and everything as well so nothing wrong with that we tend to be always on on digital media and our um, minds are like Every, everywhere, so every seven seconds is another distraction. There's not something else that, that takes your attention if you allow that. I think that that is the problem is that our minds are so scattered all over that and, and busy with everything all the time that we can't focus on how to grow our business and how to live a meaningful life. At this stage, please like this video since this content is so valuable more people need to see and understand this message and the like button you push is a signal to YouTube's algorithm to share it to more people. What I hear you saying is that during the startup phase of a business, there is a period of grinding, of putting in the hard, hard miles, but you shouldn't do that over an extended period of time. Those, those grinding times should be to develop the business to a sustainable level and then you can start training other people to to do those things. There are times that you should be grinding. And I heard a thing the other day that said the grind is for figuring out what works. Yeah, After that, exists. you should be putting, you know, putting other people in places and employ people. And really, that's one of the purposes of a business is to create jobs. So that other people that, that don't have that entrepreneurial spirit or don't have that resources to build a business so that they can uh, generate income and then hopefully use that income for a meaningful life, for a purposeful yeah. life. I started my, my, own, my own practice in 2006. I came from the employee mindset and in the sense of, I want to do everything for the business. I wanted to be everything and being the jack of all trades for the business. I wanted to be the person picking up the phone, sending faxes. In those days, you still still send faxes. I wanted to <laughs> the person go to SARS, go to the client. 
I, I couldn't delegate at all. And, and that's also the reason I've been work in the beginning, been working such long hours because I could not understand the art of delegating. Um, and that's something I'm trying to teach my team. To, you need to be able to delegate because the more you delegate, the more you empower other people, the more the business can grow and the quicker the business can grow and the more effective you can grow the business and, and service clients. But it was not until the point that I decided that I need to change myself and be able to delegate is actually at that point when the business started changing and I could start building from there because now I've been starting working on the business, not in the business. I have an amazing team that supports me and it, that allows me with my strong team to to build other businesses as well, to, to start creating some other solutions for, for, for problems out there. And we're sitting in South Africa with, I think, the most opportunities that we've ever had, ever. Um, there's no reason for you to complain about not having an income because there's so much opportunities, there's so much solutions that you can offer for potential problems um, out there. So, and Absolutely. you can either, and I'm going off, off topic, but you can either look at something as a problem or opportunity, and both would be true. It's only your perspective that that's the difference. So true. Yeah. That's so true. And I don't think it's off topic at all. I think it's so important that we as South Africans realize that we should stop waiting for someone to give, to give us handouts. We should stop waiting for the yes. government to, to, create jobs because they're not good at creating jobs. We've seen it with PSEOs failing. They were overemployed and costing us as taxpayers too much money. You know, if you don't run a, a company for profit, then it, it can't create more jobs. And that's just the reality of the situation. But as you say, Absolutely. we have problems present opportunities. And we've, if we can find ways to overcome the challenges and problems that we have, there are business opportunities there. The other thing is that we don't have to only operate in the South African economy to bring money into the economy. Yes. We're part of a global economy and the internet provides us with opportunities beyond our borders and beyond our uh, economy so that we can develop businesses outside the country and bring that profits and income into the country and employ people in South Africa. If you've come this far in the video, I know for sure that you like this content. So please remember to like this video so that more people can see it. Subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. I don't understand agree. I yeah. think the world in the internet made it so easy to work globally. There's, there's so much opportunity out there as well. Right. I've, I recently spoke to a client and his friend actually immigrated some time ago to Canada, which is an amazing country, but, but everything is working there. And he actually moved back to South Africa because he said there's no, there's no opportunities for him. There's no problem solving there. There's probably 99% of everything has been, is working perfectly. So yeah, there's no opportunities from there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. there's no solutions, solutions to offer anymore. Exactly. So, I mean, and with us as a, as a third world country, I, th I don't think we have enough time in the day, in the year to, to, to explore all the opportunities that they, they, they actually are. Um, yeah, one thing sure. in, in lead optimizers that we do is we kind of constantly explore new ideas, new solving of problems in a specific niche. And what we then do is do a kind of a joint venture between us lead optimizers and, the, and that entrepreneur. So we would be the the mentor, the, the lead generator, the brand builder of the, the business and the entrepreneur would be the person that, that works in the business and expand the business and potentially we can we can get that person to also delegate and expand the business and also start working on the business. We really want to form start forming joint ventures with, with other entrepreneurs and really helping them to uplift them and empower them as well to create a, a better life for themselves but also something like a pension in the form of a business that they potentially have uh, that they can work towards as well because we explore daily of what what could be a new potential business for somebody i mean you just see all the all the opportunities out there there's so much solutions that you can you can fulfill yeah.
know, for sure. You know, definitely. Uh, something that comes to mind now is a book I recently read. Uh, it's called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Now, I say Gerber, not Gerber, as we would in <laughs> South Africa, <laughs> because he's an American. He calls himself Michael Gerber um, or Gerber. He, in this book, he goes through the idea of that small business entrepreneurship is something that people go into because we tend to think that we know the technical work that needs to get done in the business. And then we go start a business because we believe we can do it better. Check out the rest of the channel of other content that I do about genuine wealth, purpose, entrepreneurship, investment, and how to budget your money. I thank Jasper for his time and I wish Jasper all the best and I implore you to go check out Jasper's channel and get in touch with him on social media. Take care, be blessed, I'll catch you on the flip side.